Welcome back to the Jake Beckett Show podcast. I'm your host, Jake Beckett, back in the house for another great episode this week. I'm recording this in the last couple of days of November. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving holiday, spent some time with friends and family. I sure did. Played a lot of golf. The weather was nice. I was back home in central Arkansas. Um, And I wanted to take Um, the time for this episode to do a bit of a recap on the Arkansas football season. Obviously, the big news. I'm glad I I waited to record this um, because things really turned on a dime uh, when none other than Bobby Petrino was hired as the offensive coordinator uh, at the University of Arkansas. He's back. Uh, For those of you who don't know, uh, I played football at the University of Arkansas from 2007 through the 2012 Cotton Bowl. Um, so my, the four years that I played, I redshirted under Coach Houston Nutt. Then I played all four years under Coach Petrino. Uh, we were, uh, it was pretty rough in my first couple of seasons, 08, 09. 09 was a decent year. We made it to the Liberty Bowl. I think we were 7-5, and 8-5. and five. Then our last two seasons, we finished 21-5 and five over those last two years. Uh, that, that last game, the 2012 Cotton Bowl, we won. Finished number five in the country. Uh, I was talking to uh, Chris Lowe over at ESPN. He was writing an article about uh, Coach Petrino coming back, and you know, I, I reminded him that in those of those five losses in 2010 and 2011, I think three were to number one teams, uh, number one LSU uh, once, and then twice to number one Alabama, uh, and the, the other two losses were to eventual national champion. Auburn uh, in 2010, and then uh, in the 2011 Sugar Bowl to, I believe, number five or number six, Ohio State. So we didn't lose a game to a team that was outside of the top 10 uh, in those two seasons. We never quite got over the hump, uh, never quite accomplished our goal of winning the SEC West um, or the SEC Championship. But, um, you know, that really, you know, Coach Petrino, he brought the standard uh, back to the University of Arkansas football program, the standard that I've talked about. Um, Arkansas should be, there's no reason why we shouldn't be a top 10, top 15 program in the entire country. That's, that's the legacy of Arkansas football. And, you know, I've been pretty critical of the team this year and, you know, I'm, I'm fine with, you know, getting some blowback on social media, but I think, you know, ignoring all that, um, you know, I, I think I, I have been on the nose, um, you know, with my criticism, whether everyone likes it or not. Um, You know, I I think we moved the needle uh, with the discussion that we had here on on social media. Um, And I'm going to get into what I believe about Coach Petrino's hiring, um, you know, what that means for the program, and just kind of an overarching view of what happened this year and and what's going to happen in the future. Um, You know, Arkansas got a nice boost last night. Um, I, I was watching the game. We beat Duke at home. Anytime you, you beat a top 10 team, that's a big deal. Uh, I would have loved to be at Bud Walton Arena. It was, I think, the largest home crowd in the history of the arena, over 20,000 fans. I mean, back in the day, I, I was a kid, but I remember in the 90s, it was almost impossible for teams to come in there and win in Bud Walton Arena. Obviously, that was back in the days of Nolan Richardson, the 40 Minutes of Hell. Um, you know, the game of basketball kind of caught up and adjusted to that style of play. Really, everyone plays a, a, a brand of what w- would be called 40 minutes of hell back in the 90s and early 2000s. Um, but it was fun to see to see Bud Walton, you know, it, Jay Billis and all these guys at ESPN were saying, I think even Duke's coach, John Shire, said that was one of the loudest uh, environments they'd ever played in. And, and you know, the, the score reflected that. I mean, that was... That really is, that's where we should be. And I, I want to remind everyone, I said it, uh, I've said it numerous times over the past months. I mean, my criticism of the program is based on the belief that that's where we should be. That's where we can get back to in, in basketball and football as well. Um, and I, I think that, you know, the hiring of, of Coach Petrino, you know, we'll, 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 let's, let's first recap the end of the season, because I believe the last podcast that I recorded was after the Alabama game. Um, obviously, we finished the season four and eight, um, which by any standard is not acceptable. There was a lot of you know, it, it's pretty amazing. You know, when I when I first started talking about the Arkansas football program, um, you know, I, I sent out some some critiques of Sam Pittman and everyone was still, you know, you know, putting their quarters in the jukebox, so to speak. Um, they were all in on Sam Pittman. 
Um, and that really turned on a dime this season. Um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not going to take, take credit for, for all of that, but, you know, I think that, I think people paid attention to what I was saying and, you know, whether you like it or not, um, you know, I think the results of this season, um, you know, gave some, some credibility to, to what I was saying. Um, you know, but we, we finished the season four and eight, um, we got blown out at home by Auburn, got blown out at home by Missouri, you know, that performance against Missouri, you know, we were down, I think 41 to nothing, 42 to nothing, uh, early in the second half, you know, Auburn, uh, or excuse me, Missouri really called the dogs off there. It could have been a lot worse. Um, you know, they pulled their starters early in the second half and, you know, that was, you know, you, you hate to bring up echoes of the Chad Morris era, but I mean, we were, we were getting pretty close to scraping rock bottom there. And I, I sent out a tweet, um, you know, either late in the game or, or maybe just after the game, you know, kind of laying out what, you know, why I'm not terribly optimistic right now, even with the hiring of Coach Petrino. This was, I sent the tweet out before, but here, here's the deal, because right now, you know, there's, you've got problems up and down the program. You know, obviously, I've, I've been over Pittman, the head football coach. Um, you know, everyone knows my thoughts there. You know, we've got to find a new head football coach. Um, but I think the problems go well beyond that. Um, you know, Hunter Juracek, the athletic director, um, you know, I, the reason why we couldn't move on from Pittman this year is because of the $25 million contract extension that he gave to Pittman after a nine-win season um, when no one else was coming after Pittman. You know, it's, it's a critical point to make. You know, people, well, you know, he was underpaid relative to SEC. Co that doesn't matter. The entire thing that matters in terms of head football coaching contracts and contracts in general, it's all about leverage. And Sam Pittman and Jimmy Sexton, his agent, they really didn't have any leverage. But Hunter Juracek wasn't able to, to see through that. Um, you know, the only leverage that a coach really has before his contract expires is when other programs want to steal him. You know, that, that's how these sports agents, most notably Sexton, the SEC, and others, that's how they leverage gullible athletic directors is they, 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 they put out this fear of saying, you know, hey, if you don't pay your coach X number of dollars, he's going to leave and go take some other job. But that was never a credible threat from Pittman. You know, there, there's no other, and this is, this is an important point, there's no other coach, there's no other program in the SEC, except maybe Vanderbilt, that would take Sam Pittman right now. So just think about that. There's no other program in the SEC, I don't even think Vanderbilt would, there's no other program in the conference that would trade coaches with us right now. So when we gave him that massive extension, um, you know, that was, that was a self-inflicted wound and we're reaping the, the consequences of that right now, because, you know, and, and this is why I get, get, get deeper into these systemic issues, because it shows that Hunter, the athletic director, doesn't have the trust of the big money donors. You've seen other programs, A&M, you know, they bought out Jimbo Fisher for over $75 million. Even Indiana University football program, they bought out their head coach for around the buyout that would have that, 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 that Sam Pittman would have received. So if Indiana, if if their administration can buy, I mean that's a bad football program. They have no history. They're in the Big Ten, but they could still buy out their head football coach for around the dollar amount that it would have taken to buy out Pittman. And by all accounts, we couldn't do it. You know, from from. You know, I've seen some reporting from Arkansas, the Arkansas sports media. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, I'm not sure that's true, but if it is true that Juracek was, he was sounding out donors to see if there was any appetite um, to buy out Sam Pittman, and there was none. Because, and the reason for that is because they don't trust Hunter enough to go out and find the next great head football coach at Arkansas. So that, that's a critical point that I'm making is that there's, there's a lack of trust. There's a lack of excitement. Um, you know, the, the sentiment really was at rock bottom. And so, you know, I, I sent out the tweet. We have a board of trustees that's not really dynamic. They're not really dynamic enough to make moves, to make a move at the athletic director position. Um, from how I understand it, the way that works is the chancellor at the University of Arkansas, he's the one who, who hires and fires. He's responsible for the athletic director, who I believe has the title of vice chancellor. Um, but just like with Jeff Long, you know, if, if, you know, what happened, how Jeff Long got fired is the, the board of trustees went into executive session and 
you know, reading between the lines, what probably happened in there is they told the chancellor, hey, either you're going to fire the athletic director or we, the board, are going to fire you. I just don't see the, the makeup of the board. I just don't see enough dynamic people in there to make a move like that, um, you know, to exercise their leverage. And so, yeah, when you've got an AD who's, who's unfireable, you've got a head football coach who, at least for the time being, is unfireable. Um, a yeah, four and eight record, um, you know, there was an NIL reboot, kind of a crowdfunding thing. I, I guess people have been paying attention to what I've been saying about the importance of NIL. I mean, that's good. I, I guess it's okay that we're, we're trying to innovate, kind of go, going for a, a crowdfunding mechanism of some kind. But, you know, that that's years too late. And I, I just, I don't know if, you know, trying to, um, trying to, uh, you know, solicit, you know, small dollar donations from, you know, a, a state with a population of only 3 million people. I'm just not sure if that's going to yield the type of NIL funds that other programs are dealing with. You know, but we, we have high net worth people inside the state and in the alumni network. We all know who they are. But it's clear that they're not, they're not willing to, you know, to decorate the mahogany, you know, to write those big checks um, you know, in, in the current, with the current state of the leadership in, in the program. So that's, that's just how I see things going forward. I also predicted that the, the portal would, would raid, um, you know, a lot of the best players out of our roster. Um, you know, we've already lost, um, you know, two of our, you know, top, uh, defensive players, uh, KJ Jefferson, there was a report that he was entering the portal. Uh, I'd be very surprised if he came back for another season, um, but we'll see because, you know, one, one, there was some good news and that was the hiring of coach Petrino. And it's my take on this is kind of nuanced. And I know that, you know, the fan base was looking for any kind of positive news and this was good news. Um, you know, I got some people chirping at me on social media, um, you know, coming after me after Bobby got hired as if dunking on me, like when, when, and this is what I talk about on social media, like how I'm living in people's heads. And it's, it's so clear. I mean, people, like prominent people who never tweet, um, you know, a, a former offensive lineman, um, I forget his name, he plays for the Lions, I think, right now. You know, he was coming, this guy never tweets. Um, and within 10 minutes of this news breaking, he's coming after me on social media, um, you know, as if, you know, as if I'm rooting against the program. Now, again, I, everything that I've said, you know, from from when I started, you know, on this, uh, on this, you know, on this this um, this this line of thinking, uh, back in September, I believe it was, you know, everything that I've said is based on the belief that the University of Arkansas football program and athletic program in general is underperforming. Okay, so I'm not rooting against the program. I mean, there's look, I, I'm a I'm a third generation Razorback football player. I mean, this this is you know the University of Arkansas uh, means the world to me, but I'm always I, I'm I'm going to give you the I'm, I'm going to give you my opinion. I'm going to give you the truth as I see it. You know, I've I've been there before. You know, I used to go on the radio, and you know, I mean, I, I, everyone's been guilty of it. I was guilty of it. You know, I knew the Arkansas. This is back in like the Chad Morris era or late Bielema. I knew we were going to get smoked, and I would still predict the victory because you know I'm I'm a Razorback fan, and you know people. That's what people want to hear. That's kind of what the Arkansas sports media complex is built upon, is just telling the fan base what they want to hear. And I, I guess that's that's fine. That's their business model. But I'm not going to do that. I mean, from from now on, you know, I'm going to I'm going to give you my candid opinion. You might not like it, but um, I think as events played out this season, um, it might be worth listening to. Um, so that's that's kind of my overarching take. Um, you know, as I've said before, the most important guy on a pro football team is a starting quarterback. You can't have success without a, an elite starting quarterback. And the same thing goes for college football, except as the head football coach, you simply can't have success in the college football landscape without an elite head football coach. And despite, you know, coach Petrino coming back, um, you know, that position, the head football coach has not changed. So I think coach Petrino, you know, what he's going to bring to the program, you know, he's at the end of the day, he's still the offensive coordinator. He's not the head football coach. So Coach Petrino, the guy is still an elite offensive coach. I mean, there's there's really no one. I mean, no one in the game that I've been around who knows offense like him. Um, you know, his offensive system is is outstanding. 
Um, you know, he knows how to leverage dual threat quarterbacks. He knows how to run the football. He's going to bring he's going to bring an element of toughness and innovation back into the offensive room. But at the end of the day, he's still the offensive coordinator. I think he he's going to bring an element of leadership, you know, back to the coaching staff, which I think, um, you know, Coach Barry Odom, who was the former head coach at Missouri, he was the D coordinator for the, I think Pittman's first couple of years. You know, I, I think it's clear at you know obviously this season things kind of imploded without Odom there. You know, I think Odom really um, you know really brought that sense of leadership behind the scenes. He was probably a sounding board. For, for Sam Pittman, I don't want to say he was the, the shadow head coach, but maybe he was. And so I guess the optimistic take is that Coach Petrino will bring that, um, you know, he will fill that void um, that, was le- that, was, that was created uh, when Barry Odom took the head football coaching job, I believe, at UNLV. So that's the optimistic take, that Coach Petrino will come in, um, he'll get the offense going. The offense was, was pretty disastrous this year. Um, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll revamp the offense. He'll, he'll get the offense playing good football and he'll provide that, that leadership and that sounding board and, you know, maybe be the shadow head coach behind the scenes. But, you know, you, you got to hear what I'm saying at the end of the day, he's still only the offensive coordinator. The offensive coordinator doesn't win and lose games. You know, it all starts with the head football coach. So we'll see what this does for recruiting in the immediate term. Um, we'll see what this does uh, to stem the tide of players leaving in the portal. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're still, you know, we're a four and eight football team. We couldn't buy out a $20 million contract. Um, you know, the, the board of trustees, it doesn't look like they have the makeup to, you know, make a change at the athletic director position. And the athletic director obviously couldn't make a change at the head football coach position. So, you know, this, this, this team, this program has a lot to prove for, to me going forward. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, but, but, you know, that's I, I, just to, to set all that aside, it is objectively good news. It is, I, and I put that out on social media, it is genuinely good news. Um, this was going to be a long off season, uh, you know, with not a lot of optimism, but in terms of the fan base, you know, people were desperate for good news and this was good news. And, you know, now the narrative is going to flip. You know, it, it already has. I mean, people are, you know, the glory days are back with Coach Petrino. Whether that's true or not, you know, it's a shot in the arm of adrenaline uh, into the fan base that was a little bit beaten down. And you know, you've you've got to you've got to look at that objectively and say, you know, I, I guess that's a good thing. Maybe Coach Petrino being back, um, you know, will will inspire more people to you know to uh, to 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 give more money. Uh, some of these big name donors uh, could be more, more inspired to donate more to the program, but we'll see. I mean, we, we have a, we have a, we have a money problem, but really we have a leadership problem. Um, and I just don't see how, you know, bringing in an offensive coordinator like coach Petrino fixes those more systemic issues, but we'll see, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, you know, you can't make this stuff up. I told Chris Lowe at ESPN, you know, if this was a screenplay, uh, you know, the, the producers would throw it out for being too unrealistic. I mean, this is just, this is SEC football. This is why people love it. This is why I'm talking about it right now. It's because it's it's just, it's interesting. It's compelling. Um, you know, I, I saw some tweets about the college football ratings this year. They were the highest of all time. You know, the Ohio State-Michigan game uh, was like the highest rated, you know, regular season game, I think, since the Alabama-LSU game back in 2011, I think, which was a number one versus number two matchup. So pretty, pretty incredible stuff. You know, it's a great time to be a college football fan. And, you know, everything that I'm saying is in the hope and the expectation that Arkansas can get back to getting our piece of that pie. Um, so that's, that's really, that's my take on, on what's going to happen, um, you know, in the, in the near term. You know, I, I, we'll, we'll see. It's, it, it, there's a lot to be sorted out. Um, but I don't want fans, you know, it's probably too late for this, I guess, the um, the horse has already left the barn, but you, know, you can't let your expectations get, get too far uh, ahead of, of the reality on the ground. And the reality on the ground is that we have a lot of holes in our roster, probably some more holes to fill um, you know, as the portal opens up in a couple of weeks. Um, but we'll see. You know, we'll see what happens, and um, you know, we'll see what the product in the field looks like next season. But the narrative certainly has changed uh, over this offseason with the hiring of Coach Petrino. So... Um, and one more thing, just kind of as I was talking about my, my philosophy on social media, I'm always going to speak the truth. 
Um, you know, there was a great interview that was done. Uh, it was yesterday I was watching uh, on CNBC. Elon Musk was doing an interview at some kind of a forum with Aaron Ross Sorkin. Um, and, you know, Elon, they, they asked Elon Musk about, you know, hey, what, um, you, you know, what, what's your philosophy on, uh, on, on Twitter? You know, how do you, how do you, you know, you, you say a lot of outspoken things, you get a lot of blowback. Um, you know, why do you do that when obviously it hurts your business? There's, there's all these advertisers on Twitter X that are now dropping out, they're boycotting. And Elon said, if you want to blackmail me, especially over money, then here's what I say. I get, I say, go F yourself. And he didn't say F, you know, he, he, he was dropping F bombs on live television, but that that's the philosophy that you got to have. I mean, this is the wealthiest man in the world. If he can't speak his opinion, then who can, you know, he's the wealthiest man in the world. You can't blackmail him over money. He has his own privately held social media platform. You know, that's, it's one of those rare moments where you see real leadership in, in the world today, because, you know, everyone's scared of their shadow. Everyone's scared of blowback on social media in real life. Um, you know, but social media is not real life. And I, I'm sure Elon, you know, just like me, you know, people behind the scenes, you know, not the chirpers on social media, real people in real life, they tell you, hey, thank you for saying that. You know, I, I can't say it. My friends can't say it publicly, but you can say it. And I'm not the wealthiest man in the world. I'm not Elon Musk. I'm not saying that. Um, but, but we do have a shared philosophy on speaking your mind. And, you know, I realize that, you know, that might not, you know, always win friends and influence people, but, you know, we're not on this world to be liked. You know, I, I think too many people, especially these days, they think that's the ultimate goal, um, you know, is, is just to be liked, is to not make, not make any enemies. Uh, but I believe it was Churchill who said, if you, if you don't have any enemies in your life, that means you never stood for something. Um, so that's kind of my overarching philosophy. You know, I've, I've taken the road less traveled in, in certain areas of my life. And, you know, certainly on, on, on this subject, on Arkansas football, um, you know, it, it's certainly within that same mentality. You know, I, I think I have a little bit of experience, uh, a little bit of expertise in what, you know, what it takes to, to create a winning football program at the college and pro level. You know, it, I wasn't doing it personally, but I was a part of it. I was there. I saw it. I know what I know what right looks like, and I know what wrong looks like. Um, and you know, until until these until I start seeing you know right things happening inside the athletic department at the University of Arkansas, then my opinion is not going to change. So you know, I, I'll I'll leave it with that. Um, you know, that's that's kind of my that that's my view of the way things stand. You know, at the end of the 2023 football season. For the University of Arkansas, you know it's great to see Coach Petrino back, uh, back at the University of Arkansas. Um, again, you you couldn't make this stuff up, but that's why we love SEC football. Um, and, and just to, to 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 leave things on an optimistic note, I mean that's you know that's what we saw last night at the Arkansas Duke basketball game. I mean you saw an an incredibly passionate fan base that is desperate to get behind a winner. I mean when. When things are going good at Arkansas, there's no better place to be than in Fayetteville. I mean, there's no there's no better place to be in the country, in my opinion, than in Fayetteville on a on a Razorback game day, football or basketball, when there's a winning team, when there's an elite product on the field, because there's nothing. I mean, like we, this is our this is our team in the state of Arkansas. The University of Arkansas is our flagship university. The entire state's morale kind of swings with the. Uh, you know, with the success or failure uh, of the football program and to a lesser extent, the basketball program. Um, so when things are going good, uh, there's no better place to be. And that's why I want things to be good. But to get there, uh, you know, wishing for it, just being optimistic, um, you know, that's, that's, that's not going to get you there. What's going to get you there is real leadership. It's taking a candid appraisal of the situation. Uh, it's seeing things and making hard decisions that other people can't see decisions that other people can't make. Um, so I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep sounding off. And I'm going to keep giving my candid view because, you know, I, you know, I don't want to dislocate my shoulder, patting myself on the back. But if you've been watching this space, if you've been watching what I've been putting out on social media, it has moved the needle. You know, it, it has shaken things up. It has stirred the pot. And I think that's ultimately good. Uh, and you've seen it with, you know, at, co hiring coach Petrino was probably the best offensive coordinator hire we could have possibly gotten 
Um, you know, we're rethinking our NIL situation. Um, you know, so these are these are positive developments. Um, so I'll, I'll leave you with that optimistic take. Obviously, there's going to be more to follow. Um, you know, in just in terms of future episodes. So I've got a uh, I'll be on Fox News next week if this thing comes out. I'll be on um, some Fox shows uh, in New York City at the end of next week. I'm going to put out another episode uh, in the next you know couple of weeks. I saw the Napoleon movie. Everyone knows that I'm a huge fan of Napoleon history, Napoleonic history. Um, you know, I did a whole ep- a great men of history series. Uh, one of those was on Napoleon. Uh, I'll do some more in that vein, but I want to give you my take on the movie if you haven't seen it already. Um, and, and so uh, watch this space for more episodes to come in the near future. Uh, but until next time, I'm Jake Beckett. This is the Jake Beckett Show. Thanks for tuning in. Mm-hmm.